So guys, in this next news story, the County Tyrone couple convicted for the savage killing of father of four, Pat's Ward, have appeared for sentencing today. Niall Cox from Cloher murdered Mr. Ward on the 9th of February 2019 while his partner, Karen Marie MacDonald, of the same address where he lives was found guilty of manslaughter during a two-week trial at Dungannon Crown Course earlier this year. Today was the first time the pair have appeared in court together for some considerable time for sentencing. They were separated by custody staff and neither looked at each other throughout the hearing. Seated directly behind them in the public gallery were Mr Ward's wife and parents who have attended every court hearing throughout the case. So I'll go through the sentencing in a moment but Cox initially denied murder but later changed his plea while MacDonald was convicted of manslaughter at trial. Their victim's lifeless half-naked body was discovered in an alleyway by a couple walking to work. CCTV footage captured Cox dragging Mr Ward by his arms from the home he shared with MacDonald where the brutal attack took place before abandoning him in the alleyway. Pathologist Professor Jack Crane said Mr Ward was beaten, kicked, stabbed and struck a number of times to the head with a heavy blunt elongated object. He added that extensive blood loss combined with head and chest injury responsible for rapid but not immediate death of the champion boxer. A search of the couple's home found significant areas of blood in just about every room and there was evidence of a clean-up. At trial, MacDonald insisted she had no role in the attack nor in the clean-up of the bloodied scene, instead contending she acted under duress due to fear of Cox. She claimed a fight broke out. Cox grossly overreacted. The defence counsel for Cox said this was a catastrophe for all those involved, particularly the deceased family. My client expresses sincere remorse, not manufactured or contrived, but genuine. He said from his mid-teens, Cox got in with a bad crowd. He said drugs became prevalent and he associated with negative influences and he struck up a relationship with a co-accuser and eventually moved in with her. It was accepted there were weapons in the house because people were looking for him and he had paranoia with good reason. An argument ensued and the victim allegedly struck Cox then took hold of a pickaxe handle, which he and MacDonald managed to wrestle from him. Cox accepts he then struck the victim with his, knocking him out. They took him to a bathroom where he revived and, thinking he may kill them, Cox punched him to the face several times again, knocking him unconscious. It was claimed MacDonald told him to get the victim out of the house and together they removed his clothing and took him outside. The defence said he did not intend to kill Mr Ward. The combination of drinks and drugs significantly impaired his thinking. McDonald's counsel meanwhile stated she accepted the jury's verdict and is profoundly sorry as she should have done more to help the deceased. He urged the court to view this through the prism of the most appalling violence inflicted upon her by Niall Cox in the months before her murder. She is markedly not the person who went into custody. She has been removed from the toxic personal relationship that blighted her. So Cox was jailed for 20 years and MacDonald was jailed for 10 years. Speaking after the sentencing, Mr Ward's wife described her husband as my entire world. She said he was the most loving family man who simply idolised our children. When Pat was murdered, my life was shattered. I lost the love of my life and the way in which he died will haunt me forever. I can't begin to understand how anyone could inflict such brutality, such cruelty upon another living being. We're trying to get on with our lives, but it honestly breaks my heart that Pat isn't here. He won't be around to see their birthdays and to celebrate each Christmas, and he isn't here with me to watch them grow up. I'm relieved that today's sentence has finally been passed, but I'm truly grateful to all those who played a part in the process. But it won't, of course, bring my husband back. It's not just myself and the children who continue to grieve. Pat's parents, the wider family and our closest friends have all suffered terribly. So outlining the events surrounding Mr Ward's death, Detective Inspector Claire McGravy said he was attacked in McDonald's home while he had been socialising. There was CCTV footage as I stated that it showed them dragging Mr Ward's body from the house at around 6 in the morning. McGravy added that the results of a post-mortem showed that Mr Ward had sustained horrific and multiple injuries to his head and upper body. 
said Pat was a loving husband, son and father to four young children and his wife and family had been robbed of their loved ones in the most brutal and senseless attack. So thanks to our investigation team and working in partnership with the colleagues from the Public Prosecution Service, the defendants have now been held accountable for their actions. So while I hope today's outcome offers the family some degree of closure, I'm mindful that it won't take away their heartache, sadness or loss. Their words have been torn apart and my thoughts and that of the team are with them. So once again, I just want to say rest in peace, Pat, and my condolences go out to your family. So guys, this next news story coming from Bradford. Two blocks of heroin with a street value of around £60,000 were seized when police pulled over a Bradford drug dealer's car. Tanvir Khan, who's 34, caught the attention of officers when he drove past them at speed as they were travelling along the M1. This prompted police to stop Khan at Troll Service Station in Nottinghamshire where he admitted to having some crack and heroin on him for personal use. After searching a bag he was carrying and seeing for themselves that Khan did in fact have several wraps of Class A drugs in there, officers continued the search and realised it was just the tip of the iceberg. Two large blocks of heroin were subsequently found wrapped in plastic bags and hidden between two child seats in the back of the car. A wad of around £20,000 in cash were also discovered underneath the driver's seat during the search on June the 17th. The 34-year-old went to plead guilty to charges of possession with intent to supply heroin, possession of crack and possession of cocaine and possession of criminal property and he was sentenced to four years and three months in prison. Detective Inspector James Oakton of Nottinghamshire Police said as Khan has found out to his cost, the force and indeed the courts takes anyone who tries to supply drugs across our communities extremely seriously. He was fully aware that he had large quantities of Class A drugs stashed in his car when he was stopped by our officers so it's only right he is now facing up to the consequences of his actions. Thanks to the fantastic policing instincts showcased by the officers involved in the stop in sensing that something was wrong, we have ultimately been able to take large quantities of the harmful drug off our streets. And in this next news story, coming from Sheffield Ways, a 19-year-old man, Mohammed Ibra of Sheffield, who was seen in possession of an illegal firearm on one of Sheffield's busiest roads, has been sentenced to five years in prison. Police were alerted by a call from a member of the public saying they'd seen Mohammed with a gun on Abbeydale Road running into a nearby house. Firearms officers attended an address on the road on the 9th of August and saw Ibra stashing a man bag containing the modified weapon on a windowsill. He was subsequently arrested and a quantity of cannabis was also located at the address. He pleaded guilty and appeared before Sheffield Crown Court yesterday where he was sentenced to five years for possession of a prohibited weapon and ammunition without a certificate. The judge, recorder Graham Reed's KC, said in his sentencing remarks to Ibra, illegal firearms are used by criminals to kill, maim, terrify and intimidate. All manner of serious offending is made more serious when a firearm is introduced. That is so obvious that you must have known this would eventually be the criminal purpose for which a pistol would have to be used. It is well known that dangerous firearms circulate among serious criminals only because there are people with a low profile who agree for whatever reason to hide or store firearms for them. The officer in charge, DC Hannah Bryan, from the Forces Armed Crime Team said Ibra would have been aware that police were at the address when he was seen by officers to place a man bag containing the gun out of a window in what was most likely an attempt to remove it from the house. He said the weapon was quickly recovered and examined and found to be a viable firearm. He said this is a positive result to move a gun from circulation and demonstrate that those involved in this type of criminality will be identified and will be brought before the courts. So guys, there's a number of stories coming out of the streets of the UK. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and please click a like on this video. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked, keep it real.